<laughs> Hello everybody, this is Kirsten Cable from Fluent Language and I'm here to tell you a little bit today and just generally talk about books, language learning books. I've got three book re recommendations here for you that are suitable for any language learner. So what, no matter which language you're learning, these three are going to be super, super helpful for you. But please comment and ask questions and let's also chat about books to learn different other languages. So some of the other languages that I have a lot of library availability for are French, German, I've got quite a bit of Russian learning books, even though I haven't learned Russian in a while. And of course, Welsh, my own language. But I know that there are many, many books out there. So I want to get into the first book, which uh, is actually a sneak preview what I'm doing today for you. So I want to tell you about a book called Becoming Fluent that I really, really enjoyed. I got my copy from the local library. I'm very happy that they have now added it to the library catalogue and I actually had to go and give it back to the library because somebody else ordered it in. So congratulations, whoever you are, or the person. I think that's really great. The book Becoming Fluent is different from most books. So when most people ask me about language learning books, they mean printed courses and they mean phrase books. And these books basically have the knowledge printed in them so that you look at the book and you're reading the B1 German textbook and then you theoretically you know the B1 German, right? So that's pretty straightforward. But for what's most important about language learning when you're especially when you're an adult learner is that you learn how to learn a language. And the book Becoming Fluent comes at this from a really interesting angle. It comes at this from the cognitive science angle. So the area of study, cognitive science, is a little bit like a mixture between educational research, linguistics, anthropology, speech and hearing studies, psychology. It kind of goes into a little bit of everything and I think that makes it a very good match for language learning. So I'm going through my book notes here, I'm telling you about, and you can download these if you click the bonus button on my blog article, the review for Becoming Fluent that's coming out later today. So everything Becoming Fluent is kind of all in there for you, including my book notes. Now, three amazing things that this book does is like that it goes straight at the start and meets up so closely with my own philosophy about language learning, which is that it's for everyone. It's not for the rich. It's not for the smart people only and it's not for privileged people only and it's also not for young people only so this particularly looks at the way adults learn and they say three things that are myths that this is completely um hey thanks for the hearts write me a comment um this is completely about how adults learn and how that is so so different to how children learn but actually better right so number one the myth is that adults cannot learn as easily as children this has been discredited in research it's not true adults will learn differently but just as easily as kids second myth absolute nonsense is that adults should learn in the way that children learn right you know when you're buying these products or when marketing tells you that the language learning product that you should buy is going to teach you like a child or going to teach you naturally Maybe they mention the word immersion. Maybe they mention that you will be, you know, surrounded by language and you will just pick things up. That is not how your brain works. You are an adult, so learn like an adult, not like a child. The methods are different and your brain and your skills are going to thank you for it. And myth number three, it has been proven as nonsense. Yeah, I know, whoa, <laughs> is um, when you're learning your second language that you shouldn't use your first language which again is an immersion myth to a certain extent. So people say that you should not, basically that's like saying switch off the analytical part of your brain. Don't think about rules, just kind of go straight in. And this has also been disproven. So straight in the first chapter, I loved this book because it went into myths about language learning. So you can learn as easily as every child, you know, even if you're 15, 50, 500 years old. Uh, you should not learn the same way a kid learns because your brain is not the same as a kid because you've gone through a lot of development and you've gone through a lot of analytical processes in your brain. So you, you are trained in spotting patterns, for example, in the way that small children are not. 
And number three, when you're learning your second language, feel free to use your first language because this is how you make sense of things. So these are really great. And that's just the first chapter of this book. Like I said, book notes are available. Um, just either drop your email address or drop a little comment down in the in the little comment box for this video or go to fluentlanguage.co.uk. Later today on the blog, I'm going to be publishing all these book notes. They're so good. Chapter two is about sharpening your mind. And I'll tell you now, this was my absolute favorite because this talks about exactly what I said before, learning how to learn. If we're talking about the most effective ways of studying, you know, we've previously talked about this on the podcast. There are lots and lots of biases, sort of things your brain does, nonsense things your brain tells you that aren't actually quite true. So, for example, we have confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is when you look for evidence that a language is difficult because you already think it's difficult, for example. Or when you're looking for reasons why you're not good at language learning because you already think that you're not good at language learning. So you can really talk yourself out of things very, very easily. Then there is the simulation heuristic. So heuristics are basically stupid shortcuts your brain has employed that don't really help you. And the simulation heuristic is that when it's hard to imagine doing something, it's way harder to do it. And this would kind of go some way towards explaining why a polyglot or somebody who is an experienced language learner is just a better language learner because they can imagine doing it. They've done it before. So if you've got any experience with this or can you imagine yourself, you know, sitting down, memorizing things, remembering them very easily, in which case you can do this more easily. Can you imagine yourself going through flashcards? You're going to be better at flashcards. Can you imagine yourself succeeding with written vocabulary methods, you're going to succeed at written vocabulary methods. So whatever system you are using, it's going to go that much further. This is about effective ways of studying. Goals that you set yourself are also more difficult. So when your goals, excuse me, when your goals are more difficult, they will actually have a more positive impact, right? So don't set yourself an impossible goal. Say if you're at A1 and you started learning French five weeks ago and you're thinking about your next holiday, don't start thinking about how you're going to read Flaubert and, and I don't know, just recite poems that you've written in French. But think about something that would be reasonably difficult for you to do. For example, telling the bus driver where you're going and buying that bus ticket. Because when you set yourself the slightly harder challenge, you are going to succeed ever so much more. So this is just a little bit of a, like I said, so much here, so much, a little bit of a summary of what you can expect in chapter two of Becoming Fluent. Chapter three talks about what you need to know about language and it covers questions such as which language is the hardest one to learn? If you think you know which language is the hardest language in the world to learn, tell me and I'm going to tell you what this book says. So just type in the comments, which language are you learning? Which language do you think is the hardest one in the world? Now, there are a few tips for making things easier as you speak another language. So as you speak your language, your learner language needs to be easy to understand for the person that you're talking to. So no matter if you're talking to a tutor or you're talking to your language exchange partner, Prepare them, right? Tell them what you've done before. Tell them how, where you've been learning from. Tell them some standard phrases. So kind of get them used to your accent by saying, hey, how are you doing? Oh, the weather is great today. So just whatever little small talk things that you can just kind of rattle off. They're really going to help you. Now, chapter four, I absolutely loved it. It's about pragmatics, which is something that I've kind of already studied before. Pragmatics essentially comes to, if I'm going to summarize it, and linguistics will kind of kill me, but pragmatics is all about how you use language. And the summary of this goes like this. People have conversation rules, and when they don't follow the rules, it's usually because they want something. And wanting something could be wanting something physical. It could be something like wanting attention, so that you raise your voice because you want more attention. I don't know if this works on Facebook. I don't know if it'll get me more views on this video. No idea. Um, but it's very, very interesting because this goes into the idea of culture and the culture of how the other person talks and the culture and norms of how people speak in your target language so that you can't just take, 
you know that image of the Brit on holiday where they just kind of say whatever they're saying but louder that doesn't necessarily work because it doesn't work in every target culture never mind that it doesn't work anyway um, but that is chapter four of the book which is absolutely fabulous right I'm going to jump to chapters six and seven so six I thought was brilliant because it talks about how you process information so this is where we really get into the brain right you've talked about shortcuts your brain makes we've talked about languages and the demands that they make um, and seven you're going to absolutely love if you're somebody who wants to know how to remember more vocabulary which that's all of us right so this again talks about the idea of how your brain remembers things how your brain connects with things some really great ideas in this so overall becoming fluent in my eyes is an absolute must read it's it's a really sensible kind of thorough scientific account written by cognitive scientists so the one downside of it perhaps is that it's not that easy to read so becoming fluent is a little bit um, it just it just takes a little bit more time to kind of get it all in your head now my second book that I wanted to tell you about is this one it's called fluent forever and it is written by Gabriel Weiner who we a lot of us know so his website is the tower of babelfish.com Gabriel I've also interviewed him previously he's a polyglot so you know he's he's one of those people who really speaks several languages moved to I think he's originally American moved to the USA um, learned six languages overall was an opera singer <laughs> so he's got quite a bit of stuff going on and I thought this was a very you know where becoming fluent is more about what your brain does and telling you reasons why things are the way they are which I really enjoyed this book is a lot more practical so fluent forever is more about how do you actually do this it's like bang 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 here are lots and lots of tips it's got a nice kind of um, summary areas where the key points are summarized which I really liked um, however it is basically a story of well here is one person and how they did it and here's how you can kind of do it too. The one downside of Fluent Forever that I felt is that Gabe talks a little bit from the perspective of kind of a, a bloke, a guy, right? And so there's various bits in there where he just talks about, well, and here's how um, you should imagine talk yourself speaking to a girl or how, you, how do I chat up this girl? Um, and imagine you're trying to impress girls. And there's a lot about impressing girls in there that I just didn't connect to it at all. So a lot of the goals that he talks about were very much to do with here's how I want to impress other people, which for me personally, that's not why I learn languages and I kind of don't care. So that was one side that I didn't connect with. Now, this book is, is best for you if you're into flashcards because in the final bit, he really goes into, he talks about the phonetic alphabet, which I think it's take it or leave it. But if you're going with Gabe's method, you should really just just do the phonetic alphabet but he talks a lot about how to make flashcards so if you've ever wondered how to use Anki or memorize effectively and you really want to make the most effective flashcard and you want a step-by-step -step manual then Fluent Forever is the book for you now where's my last recommendation this is written by a lady called Kirsten Hammers which is me it's actually Kirsten Cable um, and I want to tell you about Fluency Made Achievable, which is the shortest out of all these. I like to put my language books in and kind of cut out as much as I possibly can. Uh, this is a very, very practical book. Fluency Made Achievable basically covers one little aspect. So both Becoming Fluent and Fluent Forever are about what you need to do if you specifically want five, six, ten different angles of language learning. Whereas Fluency Made Achievable is the guide to core language skills. So what this book is going to, oh, someone likes it, cool. <laughs> what this book is going to tell you about is specifically the core language skills, which this is not rocket science. They are speaking, reading, listening, and writing. And I make the case in this book that you need to really train all four of these together. It's impossible to take any language exam. It is impossible to reach any kind of high level of fluency or whatever you want to call it without studying all four of the core skills. So what I did in this book was kind of introduce the concept of the core skills and then I give you a little bit of self-assessment. So you can kind of take yourself through this quiz, do your own little profile 
Um, and ideally you want your profile to look more like this and less like this. So if this is your reading, this is your speaking, then you know you've got a weakness here and that is something that you want to address. And that kind of means you need to do exercises that aren't as comfortable for you because you got your reading to this level by doing things you like. So sadly, um, or maybe fortunately, <laughs> what, this book, what, this book talk, what this book talks about is how to do things that you don't necessarily like and why you should do them and how they're going to be so 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 beneficial for you now each of the four core skills then goes into its specific section in this book where i share exercise ideas that i really like and i talk about different ways that you can train your speaking specifically or different ways that you can train your writing specifically and the final part of the book is just see who i interviewed gabriel weiner who wrote this book um, is interviews with successful language learners and people that I like. So very, very short interviews, just kind of talking about, well, what do you make of this core skills idea? Do you use it? What's your best tip? And that is pretty much all. One thing I really want to make you aware of in Fluency Made Achievable is that there is a downloadable version of this as well, so you can actually fill it in. But I set up a three-week study plan that you can use as you are as you are reading the book, right? So, yeah. <laughs> I am live on the internet. I know. I know. It's weird. It's not weird, right? So, what you... Whoop! And I fell off as well. See, that was my friend Catherine there telling me I'm live and I've just really embarrassed myself by falling off the internet. But I'm still here. So, the three book I, again, want to really recommend to you today. Excuse me while I stop this from shaking. Are Becoming Fluent by Roger Kreutz and Richard Roberts. They are really, that's a, such a thorough, excellent book. Number two, Fluency Made Achievable, which you can get on Amazon or you can get it on my own website, which is fluent, what is my website? Fluentlanguage.co.uk slash box set is the best value option. So you get two of my books and I have a professionally recorded audio book version of Fluency Made Achievable as well. I can highly recommend it. It's a really popular book, very practical, especially if you want a quick read that really pays off. Uh, Fluency Made Achievable is yours. And then finally, Fluent Forever. For if you're, especially if you're a guy or you like flashcards, those are perfect. All right, and that's it from me, really. So share in the comments, tell me what your favorite language learning books are. And if you want your own copy of these rather thorough book notes and they also include an action plan that you can take to learn languages then go to fluentlanguage.co.uk slash blog find the book review for becoming fluent and sign up on there and you'll have the whole book notes okay